morning, Beginning Church family. Welcome to our Sunday service. Today is January 23rd. Ang bilis, ano? Uh, parang kailan lang nagme-Merry Christmas and Happy New Year tayo. And now we are already in the fourth Sunday of this brand new year. Two Sundays ago, I, I myself and uh, Pastor Louis shared about the values of Beginnings Church. And we said back then, that these values are very important, not just for our church, but because these reflect the values of the kingdom of God. And uh, the text that uh, we used back then is Romans chapter 14, verse 17, which says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Today, your pastors will share the second part of the core values of Beginnings Church. And you know what? It is exciting to come together again, to hear God's word, to worship, to pray, to give, and then to go out and share the word of God to others. Excited na kayo to worship the Lord. Praise God. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you today with hearts full of gratitude, full of excitement, full of thanksgiving. Panginoon Diyos, salamat na patuloy mo kaming ginagabayan, pinapatnubayan. Patuloy, Lord, na ikaw ang aming provider, ikaw ang aming healer, ikaw ang aming deliverer. Lord, you are everything that we need. And with you, our life is full. And our life even overflows. So that not only are we blessed, we can even become a blessing. Lord, as we gather today in worship and in prayer and in your word, would you, O oh God, receive our worship today and prepare our hearts, not just to give you our highest praise, but also prepare our hearts to listen and to obey the word of God. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Beginning church family, let us worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Fam. So today, let me just invite you to sing with us as we enter our Heavenly Father gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. So let's go.
one more time. So To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Mm. only imagine when that day comes when I find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine when all I will do is forever forever worship you I can only imagine I can only imagine, oh, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel when I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and if you be still, when I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. See the chorus again. Surrounded. Oh, surrounded by your glory. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all of you be still while I stand in your presence. To my knees will I fall while I sing hallelujah. Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah, 
I can only imagine yeah. Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel While I dance for you, Jesus You know if you'll be still While I stand in your presence To my knees will I fall While I sing hallelujah to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, oh, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. When that day comes, when I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all of you be still. Will I stand in your presence? But to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. Yeah. I can only imagine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can only imagine. I can only Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful time of worship no, that we've had uh, in, in the past few minutes. And that is like the perfect worship set for this morning's continuation of what matters most, which has been, uh, which uh, Pastor Albert and Pastor Louis preached upon two weeks ago. And today we're going to continue uh, to talk about the core values of Beginnings Church. This is part two of what matters most what's really important and i love the way that we sang uh, the that second song i can only imagine because when we think about what matters most it's good to think about the end in mind you know uh I, it's I'm, I'm just so happy to be with you this morning we're very grateful for everyone who has been praying for us uh some of uh, our pastors have uh you know have been sick for the past few weeks and uh, by the grace of God and because of, uh, you know, God's mercies and healing powers and your prayers were on our way to recovery. And not just us, a lot of our church family members, no? Uh, and I'm sure all of us, we have a family member or somebody close to us that has been affected by COVID. And it really makes us think about our lives, especially when it hits this close to home. I remember before the pandemic, as I was reaching the age of 40, I was thinking, all right, I'm at the age wherein, you know, if, if all goes well, uh, I'm at my halfway point in life, you know, parang uh, that, the halftime season, that break where I can reassess the, the, the next part of my life, the, the direction, uh, you know, uh, recalibrate the things that, that we wanted to do. And so there were plans and, and things that, that I wanted to, uh, to put together because I was like at my halftime. Uh, and then the pandemic comes and all of that goes out of the window. You know, it, it makes uh, us reflect soberingly on the fact that life is really short. We don't have 80 years. We know that we were never assured of that, but it is now at this season in life that that's really all the more true. Uh, you know, being uh, isolated for this long, I think this is the longest time that I have been uh, in isolation. Yesterday was my day of freedom. Praise the Lord. 
but there were so many days that I had no human contact. <laughs> and so I'm just so grateful to the Lord to be with you today. If you, uh, you know, I, I'm going to encourage you this morning that if you can interact, uh, put, uh, you know, just press on that thumbs up emoji or the heart emoji. When you feel like the Holy Spirit is speaking with you, comment on the comment section below if, uh, if you, you want to express what the Lord is putting in your heart and edify the whole body, I encourage you to do that. Let us interact. Let's give each other signs of life uh, because it's just so wonderful to be together and fellowship together in, uh, e even in this way. You know, when, when I think about uh, our values, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to be able to review this, especially this month of January and having gone through what we went through because it makes you realize talaga and reassess again what matters most, not just in our church family, but even in our personal lives. These values that we hold dear is not just for the church, but it is something that even as a family, we, uh, we, we adhere to. To, together, Kaminina, Pastor Louis, uh, and, and our small family with Hallie. There is this tombstone, uh, very, very interesting, that said this. They found this in the U.S., very, very old tombstone that said, I came here without being consulted, and I leave without my consent. What a very sobering reality about what life is really about. So, it's true, we don't have a say on how we were born, when we were born. And, you know, a lot of times we're not assured of the length of our days or our expiry days. However, we can be very intentional and we should be on that space in between. You know, well, the, the Lord has given us these days so that we can live life to the full for His glory. And that is the life that is worth living. During this whole message, you're going to see me do a lot of hand actions because it just helps me remember these 10 values. Because I believe that, you know, rem remembering it, hearing it, uh, just, just going through it again and again helps us imbibe these values in our lives. And my challenge to all of us here today, my challenge to you is to embrace these kingdom values as well. Because it will make your life worth living. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to get to the end of our lives and, you know, look back with very little regrets. Kung pwede nga lang, walang regrets. And the only way that can happen is when our lives are centered on Jesus and lived out in these kingdom values. Romans chapter 14, verses 17 to 19. And this was the verse that Pastor Albert and pa Pastor Louis started with. Uh, during our part one, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. And I love this next part. Let us therefore make every effort. Can you say that with me? Every effort. No, I love that. Every effort. Mag effort ka. Every effort. Intentionality. Put your a hundred percent into it, no? Because life is short. Kanina sa, sa The Vibe, our, our guests were talking about that and it's so wonderful to hear that from, from a young couple. They understand. They get it, no? Life is short. So, if there is something that the Lord has placed in your heart, you know, that the way that God made you intentionally, wonderfully unique for His purposes and glory, go for it. Not half heartedly but go for it 100 percent no matter how you feel no matter what your circumstances may be trust that god will pull you through and that god is for you and with you when your life is a hundred percent for him and centered around jesus so make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification you know what are these values what 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 are uh what are uh values all about First of all, these values that we're teaching you today, they are derived from behaviors and practices in the New Testament church. They are not something that we put together, that, that we compiled as the world's greatest values. Usong uh, uso yan, like the top 10 stuff uh, according to the polls. But this is actually taken from the Word of God as taught and practiced. I love that practiced by the New Testament church. It's not just theoretical stuff, 
but we read it it's real it's historical it's powerful the kingdom of god can be realized and lived out in a god-fearing community that is centered on jesus and our values make that possible our values also complement our church doctrines by making our faith practical you know faith without works is dead and our values enable you know our doctrines to be lived out no uh you know our, our values put heart heads hands and feet to our church doctrines what a powerful combination that expresses the kingdom of god at work our values also they you know they are the behaviors and practices that our church holds dear our values make it possible uh, for us to practice what we preach you know to make it very real they make the the walking uh, possible alongside with the talking one of the main things uh, that we will see that people people really value right now is authenticity you, know? you hear that all the time people want to see what's real they don't want to be lied to they don't want uh, a double-faced uh, uh, anything that 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 is fake you know authenticity and it's not just that I believe that every person is not just looking you know for, for what you see is what you get deep inside that desire for authenticity is a real desire for truth and Jesus said that he is the way the truth and the life you know the the world wants to look at christians and actually see christ the world is hungry for divine encounters and when the church lives out kingdom values that's exactly what people will experience you know we believe that this year is going to be a year of divine encounters oh, and we're going to be seeing a lot of that we're praying about that we're believing that we're going to live that and we're going to see that happen in our lives our families and our communities and that leads us to the last one now our values make our church effective and attractive to an outsider oh that's so beautiful Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5 that your light so shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven oh that is so beautiful in the message paraphrase it says there now wherever you are you know you are meant to be salt and light that's what Jesus called us we are salt and light wherever you are you know these kingdom values makes the God colors of this world visible to those that don't know God yet. You know, wherever you are, you are the salt of the earth. It brings out the God flavors of the world so that people will taste and see that God is good through your life. So that's how important these godly values are. And that is why it is worth embracing. It is worth living out. If you are in a place in your life where you feel stuck or directionless or unmotivated I challenge you and this is based on personal experience there are a lot of times that our emotions may get in the way for various reasons you know uh, but that doesn't mean that that we cannot live out and practice these godly kingdom values the Word of God was written to our will and not our emotions so when we place our lives and our will in the hands of God God's grace and anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit will be at work so that we can be the people of God that he has intended us to be and the result no because remember we we think about you know we start with the end in mind the result is number one we will be pleasing to God God will smile on us with favor if there is one person no, that you want their, their favor upon your life. You want that to be God. You want God to be on your side. And that only happens when our lives are centered on Jesus and living out these kingdom values. Secondly, we will receive human approval. Even other people will say, yes, that's good. Yeah, God's ways are good. Yeah, I see that life. And, and the Jesus that they preach, oh, wow what they preach about who they preach about it's real because i see it in their lives in our church and i'm not just talking about the organization i'm not just talking about uh you know beginnings church incorporated it's the people of god 
when we talk about our church values, when, when, you, when you look at the people of God, personally, individually, and collectively, when you peel off the layers of what we think, say, and do, that underneath of that is our core values. Everything that is expressed outside is based on these core values, no? these kingdom values. So the 10 core values that we have, and I'm going to be making a lot of hand gestures, like what I said. It just helps me remember. And you can join in with me para, so that we can be interactive. No? And, and I pray that it will help you uh, remember them as well. Uh, what uh, Pastor Albert and Pastor Louis preached on uh, two Sundays ago is, first of all, we value Jesus. No? We value Jesus. Everything that we do revolves around, is centered upon, and points back to Jesus. So we value Jesus. Secondly, we value the Holy Spirit. We value the Holy Spirit. The Lord said in His Word, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. You know, the older I get, the more I realize how limited I really am. But at the same time, because of the Holy Spirit, I see how great God really is. So we value Jesus, we value the Holy Spirit, and we value the Word of God. And which is why every year, we invite everyone in our church family. And even if you're not yet part of our church family, try the Word of God. Try reading through it, meditating upon it with us, you know, throughout the whole year. We have a Bible reading plan. We hope that you're reading it with us so that we're literally on the same page. We're growing in the Word of God together because God's Word will never never fail you know so we value Jesus we value, we value the Holy Spirit we value the Word of God and then we value personal evangelism and intentional discipleship so that's being outward these are the very main foundations that we have you know as as uh, as a family the the foundational uh, kingdom values that we hold dear we, we you know we have been commissioned by God to, uh, to make disciples of all nations. And we're going to be going through the next six values and we're going to see how that plays out and how that looks like in the grand scheme of things and in the kingdom of God. Number five, we value the fellowship of believers corporately and in small groups, in person and virtually in a spirit of loving accountability. It is so beautiful no, the way that the kingdom of God continues to forcefully advance through the fellowship of believers. Church doesn't happen just inside the church building. We've known that. But for the past two years, we have been able by force to practice that and see the power of God at work even in new ways that we can fellowship together. You know, we invite you to be part of a life group. A life group is God's design. It's Jesus' model. Jesus had his 12 disciples as his core. Those are the people that, that he lived with while he was on, while he was on the earth, ministered with, uh, and trained and equipped to turn the world right side up. No? 12 disciples. That, that was Jesus' model for, for growth. And excellence in ministry. So if you're not yet part of a life group, we invite you to be part of a life group. Even if it's your first time to see this message, you know, it's not an accident that you're hearing this. If you feel alone or you feel like you just need a little help, you need prayer, uh, even if it's just, you know, a, a, a very simple thing or if it's a big thing, a life group will help you because it is the gathering of the people of God centered on Jesus and moving in the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a place where you will grow spiritually, where you will be known by the people that you are with, and you will also have that wonderful opportunity to invest in the lives of others. No? So join a life group if you don't have a life group yet, or if you want someone, if you know someone who needs a life group, uh, ask them to message us or comment down below, tag them in this message. And, you know, go, go to our social media page and let us know. We would love to help you grow in the Lord. Uh, I love the picture of our virtual gatherings as well. No, talaga, it's a reminder uh, to all of us that uh, there may be lots of means and ways and strategies as we go ahead 
towards the plans and purposes of God. Talagang God's plans and purposes will not be stopped. So many creative ministries that have been uh, birthed no, as the, as the people of God gathered together in fellowship and sometime last year. And again, we're going to be having this in March, God willing. We're going to have our face-to-face -face gatherings again. You know, there's something so beautiful and special when the people of God gather together in His name. Something powerful happens. There seems to be a special presence of God when people come together. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, it says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. There is this wonderful uh, meme ba yung tawag doon? Like, like that picture? Uh, that kindness is contagious. That love, joy, peace, is, it's contagious. So if there's something that, that you're going to be spreading, you know, spread these things. Uh, and that really happens all the more when the people of God come together in loving fellowship. No? The kindness multiplies. The joy multiplies. The growth multiplies and so which is why the the scriptures remind us not to give up meeting together guys when you feel like you are wanting to stay away from the family of god all the more that you push yourself that you ask for help so that you will not be separated or isolated you know that is always the enemy's scheme to trick us into being away from, from God's family. And that's the way that the enemy attacks us when we are isolated. And so being the family of God keeps us protected and keeps us growing. Matthew 18, 20, love this. We know this scripture. It says, for where, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. You know, there's this special presence of God. I remember this particular testimony of one of our, she's one of our workers now just love this uh in in one of our cella or our praise and worship nights which we used to hold in church uh it was it was the first time that she entered actually our church building because she was invited by an acquaintance to come and attend a praise and uh, a night a 12-hour praise and worship event and i remember uh when when she was telling us about the story that she entered that place and the, in her mind that was her last day already of living here on earth she was so depressed that she wanted to end her life that day or, or or that evening and when she entered that space where people were just praising and praying and worshiping the lord she had that supernatural presence of god to speak to her heart and and tell her and remind her that jesus loves her Nobody can do that. Nobody was talking to her. Nobody laid hands on her. But it was just being in the very presence of the people of God, praising and worshiping, you know, that that supernatural breakthrough happened. You know, so we value the fellowship of believers. Next, we value the power of prayer. And the reason why those things happen is because God's people pray. No, everything that we do here in church, the very foundation that we have is prayer. We just finished our five days of prayer and fasting. And wow, uh, I, I, I have been uh, personally revived during that time. Uh, that was also the time that uh, I was in quarantine and uh, just in the middle of recovery. Uh, but I'm very grateful for, for those times no, that, that we can have that. Every Friday, we have designated it as a time of prayer and fasting corporately as a church. We do that every Friday. We get into the Word of God together and pray together because we know that if there's something that's going to break through in any activity that we have in our lives, no, even in the Monday, everyday things, if we're, if we're going to see divine encounters, we need prayers. The foundation of that is prayers. Nothing is going to happen. You know, you, you must spiritual breakthroughs that, that, that we're, we're wanting, we're expecting. That's not going to happen without prayers. I especially love one of the pictures uh, here uh, about when we used to pray together in the services. 
and we're you know I'm, I'm believing for a time when we can do that again when we can pray together again like physically hold hands together again uh, but also one of the things that this pandemic has done is that as families in our households uh, I, I pray that this is true in your life as well it is, is that as families in the homes uh, it it has really helped our prayer lives together as families no uh, it would be wonderful if you can hold hands together in prayer if you can focus the family on prayer if we can lay the foundation of prayer in our children's lives oh lord help us do that because if we can connect people to god through prayer then they're going to be set for growth Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says there, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. If there is one thing that you should not give up on, it's prayer. The devil is so afraid of praying people, and he loves it. He loves it when our time is taken away from prayer and instead is just poured into everything else, into something else. Not just entertainment, but sometimes it's filled with good things. You know, this is something that I have to personally struggle with because, you know, I, I, I tend to be very busy. Uh, I, I tend to work hard. I, I, I love working hard. I love spending my, my energies on, on what I believe to be God's purposes for my life. But they are useless if it's not going to be on the foundation of prayer. And so we encourage, that is why we set it in our calendars. Because if you don't put it in your calendar, it's not going to happen. That's why we wake up early in the morning on Fridays at 6 a.m. Because truly, if you're not going to put it in the calendar, if, if it's not important to you, you're not going to do it. And prayer is not something that automatically you want to get into. Let's be honest about that. Yes, there are times when you're going to be inspired to pray, when you're super motivated to pray, when there's a big need, oh, all the more, that we want to be in prayer all the time. But you know what? The practice of prayer is a solid foundation, one of the most important values that we need to live by, the power of prayer. This praying uh, and not giving up, this is actually the parable of that widow knocking on the door of this judge that did not fear God nor cared about what people thought. So if this kind of judge relented to this woman who just kept knocking on the door, knocking on the door, asking for justice, you know, sabi ni Jesus, how much more will God do that for us when we keep knocking on the door, when we keep persisting, persevering in prayer, it is actually a very beautiful faith declaration that God, I don't want anyone else's answer. I want yours. Lord, I don't want any other, I don't want anyone else's way. I want yours no matter how long it may take, no matter what may happen. Lord, I'm going to knock on your door. We believe in the power of prayer. You know, I love this next verse as well, and I'm sure you're going to love it because if there's going to be a memory verse for you today, this is a good memory verse. It's three words. Pray without ceasing. Oh, diba? Today, you already have a memory verse that you've memorized. And not just memorized, I pray that you will uh, live it out as well. Pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Prayer should be our first recourse. Our first recourse. Even before we go to our, to our several plans, plan A to plan Z, you know, we pray first. We pray first. Uh, I love what E.M. Bounds said. Uh, he, he is a, he's a clergyman. He was also a lawyer and an author. He wrote uh, 11 books. Nine of them was about the power of prayer. And he said this, prayers outlive the lives of those who utter them. They outlive a generation, outlive an age, outlive a world. Through people's prayers, you know, lives are changed. Souls are saved. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to have the graduation of our uh, EE or Evangelism Explosion Quick Share graduates. You know, people who have committed themselves to share the gospel to people. And everything that they did, what is being taught to us in everything that we do as a church, lahat yan, our foundation is prayer. Because it is prayers 
you know, that, that bring people to the presence of God. Even before we share the gospel, we prepare people's hearts and our hearts through prayers. So we, we, believe, we believe in the fellowship of believers. We believe in the power of prayer. And then next is we value the local church, L and C. One of the letters is baliktad, but that's okay. It just helps remember. We, we, be, we value the local church by faithful involvement through serving and giving and by practicing integrity, discipline, and excellence in ministry. Oh, beautiful. I, I love this picture and the growing number of, uh, of people belonging to the local church in the different areas, not just of Metro Manila, but even in the provinces and, and in the world. No, not just beginnings church, but the whole body of Christ. But we believe in the local church, a place where you will belong to, where you will be a part of. No, where you will be known and you will also know other people and you will and you will serve. Romans chapter 12, verses 4 to 8, it says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. But you have a place in the body of Christ, no? And that is the local church. You have an important role to play. And you don't have to be limited by, by what you already see happen in the local church family. So if you're part of Beginnings Church and you see that these are the ministries that, that, uh, that are available, if you see that these are the places where you feel na, all right, th this is what's available, don't be limited by that. You know, God has made you wonderfully unique in your own way with various gifts that will fit somewhere in the body. And sometimes it may also mean that it's something new, that it's something wonderfully unique to you. A lot of times it's really like that, but you are an important part of the body. And that is the beauty of being part of the local church because you not only uh, get to receive, but you also get to contribute, no? It's like our bodies. It's so wonderful to be well enough to speak to you today, to interact with you today. When I was sick, you know, certain parts of my body wasn't functioning or, you know, my, my kulang. But when you are well, you know, and, and this is a picture of, of a healthy local body. It's when people come together with the right heart for the Lord, you know, healthy in, in, in the spiritual, in, in their spiritual lives and serving one another with love. You know, there, there's so much that we can do together. And so we value the local church. God has designed the local church to be his expression of the kingdom. You know, again, Matthew chapter 5, that picture of being a light to the world, you know, being a city on a hill. You know, that is the picture of a local church. It is the picture of a city, a people. Uh, that has come together to express the glory of God. If we wanted people to know God, to, to see the glory of God, you can't do it alone. You know, there is no superstar here. None of us is good enough or, or wonderful enough, intelligent enough to embody the whole of Jesus. You know? uh, it, it is a combination of God's people together expressing the very heart, the very nature of Jesus to the world. I love what Reinhard Bonnke said. He's an evangelist uh, and, and he's gone home to be with the Lord now. He said that evangelism and the local church are inseparable. It's like the good Samaritan seeking an inn for the one he rescued. So again, this also gives us a beautiful picture that all of these values, they work together as one. Nisha yung, okay, I'll live this out uh, today and then tomorrow I'll live out the, the second one. They, they, it's, it's, it's alive. As, as one, you know, they may be 10 values that is lived out in our everyday life. This quotation resounds to me because personally, this is also what we have experienced. Uh, me personally and as a family, that when we were shared the gospel, uh, 
it, it was not just for a short-term basis. You know, the, the people that God has sent from the local church to reach out to us uh, at, at the start of our Christian journey, you know, they, they made sure that we were connected to the whole body. They made sure that we were connected to the other people, to the other members of the church. And, and that's the way that we thrived and that's the way that we grew. No? God is so good. So next, no, we value the local church and then we also value every person. No? Every person. We value every person as someone made in the image of God, regardless of race, social status, and worldview. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your age, your background. No? Uh, in, in our church family, uh, I, I have been so blessed to witness our, uh, our people, some, some of our elders who are big time hotshots outside in, you know, in, in their various uh, corporate or, or you know, in, in the world's environment. But once they step into the fellowship of believers, once they step uh, in our church premises, they leave their titles and their accolades at the door. And they come in just being one of the people of God. And it doesn't matter if you're new, if you're old, it doesn't matter uh, what nationality you, you are in. There's no, uh, no, nobody is higher than the other. Every person no, is valuable to the Lord. We believe in our church family that every person needs to hear the good news about Jesus Christ, no matter what their circumstances may be, no matter what, uh, what, what their political views may be, you know. Uh, sometimes uh, it's, it's very difficult to, uh, to apply this with people that we disagree with. But this is exactly where we need to be reminded that this is a kingdom value, the valuing of every person. When you, when you think about uh, a person that you have natural prejudices against, and to be very honest with everyone, no? if you're going to be completely honest with yourself as well, we all have our biases and prejudices. And in the kingdom of God, this is the beauty of the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of God. The grace of God enables us to go beyond those prejudices so that we begin to see people the way that God sees them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, so God created mankind in his own image, in his own image. Kaya that person that you don't like, that person that you disagree with on many areas, that person that talagang, oh, when you look at them, sometimes your blood curls talaga, oh Lord, help us to see them, that they are created in your image. No? In the image of God, he created them, male uh, and female, he created them. We value every person. Pastor Anna, what does that look like? Well, I'm glad you asked because that looks like Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. When we talk about uh, God valuing every person, you know, yung imago dei, that beautiful Latin phrase, being made in the image of God, it is a picture of Jesus serving his disciples doesn't matter their status in life, their age. It doesn't matter uh, their background. It didn't even matter that there was a Judas there. But Jesus served. And that is how it is expressed in our church and how it should be expressed in our lives because that is the very example of Jesus. So we value every person. And then we value, we, we value every person. And then that C again, we value our community where we live we work and study by actively engaging it through loving outreach this pandemic has really made our people shine all the more you know, by the grace of god uh, there, there have been community pantries uh, prison ministry uh, there, there's our COVID-19 ministry. By the way, guys, if you have been blessed by these ministries, uh, click on the thumbs up sign or on the heart emoji. If you have been, uh, you know, prayed for by, by our prayer teams, our COVID-19 ministry, my goodness, this is the kingdom of God at work. This is the kingdom of God being real to people's lives. And we want to uh, commend our COVID-19 ministry uh, headed by uh, Kuya Jun and, and Ate Christy Campita and also our Del 3 students who in this very latest upsurge 
uh, of of this virus talaga they they stepped up and responded no and when somebody got sick somebody else uh, who who was well enough uh, was there to to still bless others no we we value our community by actively engaging it through loving outreach and it's not just that it's not just in the formal communities that the people of god really shine it is actually nakakatuwa no there there, there are people uh, that, that are helping out their neighbors their family members uh, talaga living out bible principles so that their neighbors and their family members their relatives their friends talaga, they they taste and see that god is good they look at these christians and they see christ And it's not just, you know, through organized ministries. And organized ministries are wonderful. They make such a big impact. But even in the small impact that we personally make as we are led by the Spirit of God, you know, that enhances your community. It makes the community see that Jesus is real. You know? We've, we also engage in the practical matters of our community. All throughout this time and even before the pandemic, we have engaged in various community outreaches, In, uh, in, in, the, in the different cities, in places where we see that there needs to be teaching in the youth, in places where we see that, that there needs to be help, prayer, counseling, where the gospel needs to be preached, our people organize and, you know, and, and they go there. Where there is a need for mental health, you know, because we believe that Jesus is our healer, our people are there. Whether it's done in the offices uh, physically or online, our people are there. When there are practical matters that people need to be updated with, that will engage our community so that our communities will be better. Our people are there. You know, talagang, uh, it, it is that place where the rubber meets the road, where our, where our faith talaga is practiced. And we see that, and that is how we value our community. We want to see people engaging our communities, uh, stepping up when there's a need in the community, even in small ways. And I also would just like to say, if you are called by God, whether now or in the future, to serve in your community in whatever capacity, go for it. Go for it. And don't carry your own banner. Carry the banner of Jesus. Diba? Hallelujah. Mark chapter 5, verse 19. Jesus uh, did not let him but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And this was Jesus talking to the demoniac in, uh, from whom he delivered demons out. And this person was set free. And Jesus was telling him, Go uh, and tell the people how much the Lord has done for you. Everything that we do. Every good deed that is done in the church points back to Jesus because we are all about winning people to Jesus. Acts chapter 5 verse 20, it says, Go in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people, uh, and tell the people all about this new life. Colossians chapter 4 verses 5 and 6, Be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Let it be that when people see you, talagang they know that you have something good. I remember one of our families that, uh, that the church ministered to before, uh, they were looking for their house. They were gonna do a house visit because the, the family needed help. And when our workers went there, Uh, they were asking where the house was. And when they asked one of the neighbors, one of our workers asked, oh, does so-and-so live here? And then the neighbor said, oh, that couple, you, you know, yung mga tambay sa kanto siguro yun, oh, that couple that always fought a lot. Ah, yeah, oh, oh that guy who, ano, yung nagja-jumper, <laughs> one who steals electricity. I mean, that's what this family was known for in their community. And oh, my stars. Uh, what a testimony, no? <laughs> however, however, it didn't end there naman. And this is the beauty of the kingdom of God and God's values at work. You know, that family got restored and healed. And their journey has not yet ended. I'm not going to say that it had a happy ending. But it definitely had 
happy transitions for the glory of God. Because that family was touched and changed by the power of the Lord. Won't it be wonderful? And this has also happened to us as well. That when we ask for directions going to a person's house, that that family or that person is known in the community because they are good people in the community. You know, yung, uh, when, when people uh, know you and then they find out that you're a Christian, they're going to say, ah, kaya pala ganyan ka because you're a Christian. Sana hindi yung, ah, Christiano pa naman. <laughs> but, you know, people taste and see that you are good. Uh, uh, the people taste and see that God is good through your life. And then lastly, we value strong families. Strong families as expressed by ministry to men, women, children, youth, singles, married people, seniors, and, uh, uh, and household staff. So everybody, every person in the family, you have a place here in the local church. You have a place in beginnings church we value strong families and personally this is something that the lord has really uh worked in my life you no know? and and still a work in progress and i i praise the lord for these kingdom values because when we when we put our lives no uh na, na kadikit nitong values na to when we when we look at our lives through these lenses no of god's kingdom then it puts us to right it helps us to live lives that have real meaning, you know? that, uh, lives that really matter. You know, uh, we try to start uh, our kids as young as they are and sow the, the seeds of faith into their lives. So we encourage you, if you know of children, have them attend kids' church. You're never going to lose if you sow the word of God and the life of God in the lives of the children. The younger we start with them, the better. Now, it's not a guarantee that as they grow up, they're going to live perfect lives. That's never going to happen. But remember, what you sow, you will reap. That is why with our children, we sow as much of the word of God and the presence of God you know, and the values of God into their lives so that as they grow up, you know, they have the foundation and the things that they need to live godly lives and bring honor to the Lord. Our youth, you know, our youth are not just the leaders of the future. In this pandemic, it's the youth that is spearheading the most influence. If leadership is influence and our youth are just right about there, they are the most active, no? they, they are the most proficient in this online world. And so, can you imagine, you know, young people, na talagang expressing the kingdom, the, the kingdom values of God and changing communities. We believe in strong families. That is why people uh, who are getting married, we spend a lot of time with them. And if you plan to get married or if you need counseling for your marriage, we want to help you because we believe that. No, We believe in strong families because strong families make for strong communities, makes for strong churches. And that is one of the best ways that God is glorified. And of course, even if you're senior, there's no retirement with the Lord, only a changing of fresh tires for this new season of your life. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. How wonderful we believe in the value of strong families because that is kingdom value. Acts chapter 16, verse 31, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole household and that is what believe no oh 11 o'clock na <laughs> and thank you for bearing with me so these are the 10 values that we hold dearly as a church and i challenge you to live out in your lives no and in your families first we value jesus we value the Holy Spirit. We value the Word of God. We value in, uh, personal evangelism and intentional discipleship. We value the fellowship of believers. We value the power of prayer. We value the local church. We value every person. We value our communities and we value strong families. Begin with the end in mind. That is the only way that our lives matter. It is when it is centered on Jesus and lived out with these kingdom values. You know, one of our members who had gone home recently with the Lord, no, sometime late last year, I remember that during his eulogy, 
One of the most beautiful things I've heard in a eulogy was spoken of by his longtime friend. And this is what his longtime friend said. Sabi ng friend niya, this person, his life was all about his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he encouraged, encouraged us, his friends, every day to live the same way as well. How beautiful. When I heard that, talaga, the prayer in my heart was, Lord, I want that also. I want that kind of life. Because that kind of life will outlive me and it will bring people into your kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for every day that we get to have this opportunity to have divine encounters with you as we see and live out the reality of this, these kingdom principles in our lives by your grace, by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you are so gracious that you have taught these things to us and not just taught us through the word, but we see that talaga embodied by Jesus. Lord Jesus, you model that when you were here on earth. So it gives us that, uh, you know, that, that excitement that we too can live in such a way. We have a definite example from you and the glimpse of the kingdom, uh, not just of what is to come, but a glimpse of the kingdom here on earth. You know, in our worship song this morning, I can only imagine, Lord, we, we begin with the end in mind and we look forward to that glorious day where we will be with you face to face alongside the people who have been one to the kingdom because these kingdom values are lived out here on earth. But while we await that day, oh Lord, help us, Lord, uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we will be able to express these values in our lives and bring you the utmost glory in everything that we do as individuals, as families, and as a church. Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done in every area of our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah if this is your first time po to be with us or if you would like to grow more in your relationship with jesus please don't hesitate to let us know comment on the comment section below or send us a message we would love to connect with you and help you live out live out these kingdom principles as well so god bless you and now i will turn you over to tini uh, to exhort us in giving and also close us in prayer today Hello everyone, I hope you were blessed with the message today and that you may have that desire to experience God more. So as we experience God, uh, tithing is a very powerful experience to experience God's sovereignty and love. And as it is said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7 in IV version, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. May God continually use you as a channel of blessing. In my experience as a tight giver, it is not always that uh, I have, um, I have in my head, in my own personal accounting that I have a tight to give. But as we put our hope and trust in God, he will be the one that will provide for us in the exact time and at the kung kailan yung the most that we need at the exact time, yung precise time that we need. So that's what's so amazing when we experience God. He, he is the one who is sustaining us, especially at this time of pandemic, a time of uncertainty. We don't know until when. It is another year. It's, all, all, uh, it's all already been two years. But in this time of uncertainty, we can be certain that God doesn't change with his promises, with his um, word. So that's why I would like to encourage everyone to experience God through giving. 
To give your tithes and offering to the church via online giving, visit our website, beginningschurch.org slash give or see the details that will be flashed on your screen. You may also give through payment terminals via ATM, debit, or credit cards. We also encourage you to send us a proof of your transfer and do let us know which ministry of God has spoken for you to give. You may also give your offerings through our offering box at the lobby or you may ask uh, one of our church members uh, on how to give. I would also like to invite you all to join us every Sunday or join our online services. If you have any prayer concerns, feel free to message us via our social media accounts. Thank you for your generous giving and may God bless you more this 2022. Uh, I hope to see you all again next um, online sessions and as uh, a live natin sa church. Thank you everyone. I hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>